In this video, I want to provide an introduction to panel models and also explain some of the difficulties which estimating panel data models actually present. So the example which I'm going to talk about here is, let's say we were interested in, in the various factors which influence the house price in a given city I at time t. And we were explicitly interested in what was the effect of the crime rate in that particular city I at time t on house prices. So the magnitude of that effect is given by this coefficient beta 1 here. But we suppose that there are a whole range of other factors, some of which are solely time dependent, so I'm going to call them VT, some of them which are city dependent but don't vary across time, so I'm going to call that alpha i, and then there are some sort of idiosyncratic factors which also influence house prices in a city i at time t. So let's talk through each of these three terms here, and, and essentially each of these three terms are our error terms here. So this BT, what might that represent? Well, this is representing terms which are solely time dependent. And this might represent things which are time dependent but don't vary across cities. So it might represent the sort of upwards trend in house prices across time, since there is some sort of covariance in house prices across properties in the United States. And this trend might be covariate across cities because perhaps the average citizen in the US has got slightly richer across time. So that might be some of those factors which are contained in the VT term here. How about this alpha i? So by just saying it has a subscript i and no subscript t, I'm saying that it is solely what I'm going to call city dependent. So just so we're absolutely clear here, the variable i takes on the value 1 through n, where capital N represents our last city and 1 represents our first, and small t here takes on a value of 1 through t, where it represents the time period. So what sort of factors might be contained in this city-dependent error term? Well, these are things which don't vary across time, so it might be things like, for example, the geography. The geography almost certainly doesn't vary across time. Some other factors are approximately time independent, so that might be things such as the demographics of that particular city, because that basically doesn't change that much from perhaps one year to the next, one month to the next, etc. A range of other factors such as race and the general education level will also be approximately constant through time. Okay, so before we estimate this above model, I'm going to write it in a slightly different way, which is the way which we normally start off thinking about panel models. So we're going to have that the house price of city i at time t is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times crime in city i at time t, but when we come to look at this error term vt here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to include a dummy variable for each of these time periods which we're talking about. So we're having some constant gamma 1 times our dummy variable for time period 2, which I'm going to call delta 2t, plus now I'm going to include another dummy for the third time period, delta 3t, all the way up till I have my sort of gamma t minus 1, delta t small t. So I've included a dummy variable for t minus 1 of the periods. Uh, I don't need to include it for the first period because then we would fall into the dummy variables trap if we were to do that. But essentially I have included dummy variables for each of the different time periods, which allows for house prices across different cities in the United States to be changing over time. Okay, so I could do exactly the same thing for this alpha i term up here. I could just include dummies for each of my n cities. And that is actually a perfectly valid estimator, and, and we'll talk about that in due course. But as a sort of first starter, we don't want to do that. And the reason for that is generally that when we have panel data, 
we normally have n which is quite large so we're talking about an, a large number of cities but the time periods are relatively small so we don't have that many time periods so it's perfectly fine to include dummies for every single time period but this whole expression will become completely unwieldy very quickly if we start to include dummy variables for each of the different cities. So typically what we do is we still contain this alpha right term here within our errors. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that the actual error which we see for our regression is the sum of alpha right and this idiosyncratic error, UIT. And I'm actually going to call this a particular term. I'm going to call it eta it. Okay, so why can't we just estimate this model here via called OLS? In other words, why can't we just treat each of our different observations across different cities and across different time as if they are just randomly sampled observations? What's the problem with doing that? Well, remember that we require, in order for our OLS estimator to be consistent, we require that the covariant of our error, which is now this eta it, with our independent variable, which in this case it's just we've just got one independent variable, so we've got crime it has to be equal to zero. And note that this is just the requirement for OLS to be consistent. In order for it to be unbiased, we'd require it to be covariant with, or we'd require the covariance of this error with the values of prime for all time periods, which aren't necessarily equal to t, has to be equal to zero. But in principle, I'm talking about circumstances where we have quite a large sample, so we really only require the conditions for OLS to be consistent. So this has to hold for all i and for all t, but we don't have to worry about an s here, so we just have, have these two particular requirements here. Okay, so why is this likely not going to be the case if we estimate this above model as I've specified it here? Well, let's actually break out this eta it into its various parts. So we've got here eta it I can replace by alpha i plus uit because remember I just defined eta it to be the error which we actually, and we don't really observe, but it's the inferred error which we have from our regression. So we've got the covariance of alpha i plus uit with prime in city i at time t. Well, we can assume perhaps quite safely that uit isn't correlated with crime at it. So I'm actually just going to assume that that term isn't important. So we're just going to be left here with the covariance of alpha i with crime it. But why can't I necessarily assume that this is equal to zero? Well, the reason is that essentially these time independent factors, so those factors which are city dependent, such as geography, demographics, race, and education, are likely correlated with the crime rate. As an example, I might suppose that as the average age of a city goes up, the crime rate, which I'm representing here by the horizontal, or sorry, the vertical axis, likely falls. So as the average age of citizens increases, the crime rate likely goes down. So there's almost certainly some covariance between the age rate, which I'm meaning here in terms of demographics, with the crime rate. Similarly, you could suppose that as the level of education in a city goes up, perhaps the crime rate would decline. And you might suppose that the ethnic fractionalization of a city, so that's the number of different ethnic fractions present within a city, might also be correlated with the crime rate. And note that even though we haven't included each of these terms in our regression, or in fact because of the fact we haven't included these terms in our regression, there is going to be some covariance of these time independent factors with our independent variable, which is going to mean that the covariance between alpha i and crime rate doesn't equal zero, which means that the covariance of our error, eta i t, with the crime rate i t is, uh, at, in city i at time t, is not equal to zero. So in these circumstances here, OLS will be both biased and 
inconsistent. So just estimating this above model here by a pooled OLS is not going to be a very good thing to do because of these various factors which are contained within this alpha I term here. And this alpha I term here is sufficiently important for us to have a particular name for it. It is known in econometrics as unobserved heterogeneity. And it's unobserved because we don't actually observe necessarily these various factors which are constant through time. And it's heterogeneous because of the fact that it varies across, in this example, city. And it is this unobserved heterogeneity which leads a pooled OLS estimates to both be biased and inconsistent. So what can we do? Well, the answer is we need a new type of estimator and that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video. I'll see you then.